We've been talking about testimony. We've been talking about witnessing. And as my son said, our testimony has to be experiential, not experimental. You can only testify what you've actually experienced. When you're in the court and they put you on the witness stand, and if you say something that you heard, then the opposing attorney will get up and say, hearsay, that's hearsay. You didn't experience that yourself. That's just something you heard. And it is not admissible as evidence in the court of law because it's hearsay. So let me ask, is your testimony hearsay or is it something you experience for your own self? Is our testimony admissible in the courts of heaven? Is that admissible? Oh, you know, Jesus is a healer. Have you ever been sick and he healed you? Somebody say, well, can't you just, because you know it, can't you just say it? You can say it, but I'm talking about having power. Remember, they will overcome. The devil, Satan, and his kingdom is overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And you have to have a powerful, te- test- testify where you are. Amen. Testify where you are. Don't think God is not impressed with you trying to testify about him when he knows you really don't know him on that level. That doesn't impress God. You know, I know God to be this. I know God. I know God. And God's like, really? You better be glad I'm not there in the flesh to let everybody know you're lying. No, I'm not checking my texts. something the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Now, today we're going to learn about an attribute Jesus had that literally fueled his desire to help people, and we need the same characteristic in our lives consistently. This literally fueled Jesus's desire to help. And, well, help me, Father, preach this message today. Second thing the Holy Spirit told me to say, this is one of the very least admired attributes of Jesus Christ that people desire to emulate. It's one of the least desired attributes of Jesus that we want to copy. One of the least desired attributes of Jesus that's even talked about. When you say you want to be like Jesus, you want that power, and I really want to love like Jesus. I really want to do, you don't really too much say love too much anymore. It's just, I want that power like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. But there's something Jesus did that we don't like to do. But we better, we better do it because God sent this message. Do you know why I preach sermons? I preach sermons because God gives me a message. I say, Father, and you know, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to let you into to my um, secret closet life. Just a little bit. You can just peek in. I ain't going to open the door widely because it's secret closet. But I have been so accustomed to saying, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to the people this Sunday? What is the Father saying that he wants? I haven't had to pray that prayer since I can remember because he's constantly giving me what the people need. I don't even have to ask. He's just giving it, giving it, giving it. And so I get the message and I go find the scriptures and of course that becomes the sermon. And that is so we will know what we're supposed to do. 
That's why I teach. That's why I preach. So we'll know what we're supposed to do. And it comes to me first, so I get to go ahead and practice it before I preach it. As you've heard me say often, I don't practice what I preach. I preach what I'm already practicing. And so this helps me deliver it to you because I've already worked out all the snags and all the potholes. I know what I can tell you what to walk around. So now that I've given you such a horrible introduction, something that Jesus did that we don't want to do. And maybe that's why the Holy Spirit told me to title it the forgotten compassion of Jesus. The forgotten compassion. When we think about Jesus, that's one of the last things we think about, compassion. And don't, don't even try to say, I'm going to be like Jesus, I'm going to be just like him, and what about our compassion? Yes. Holy Spirit say, we do not have compassion. Hallelujah. Sonia, we don't have it in the church. Hallelujah. Like it needs to be. Yes. <laughs> Holy Spirit just said this to me. We have selective compassion. Yes. Yes. I'll be compassionate on, on whoever I want to be because they in my clique. They're in my circle. And since they're in my circle, you know, I'm compassionate with them. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and, and deal with this. Are y'all still excited about Jesus? Okay, all right, all right, all right. That's good, that's good. Yep, you're going to need it. You're going to need that excitement. I'm, I'm, I'm joyful, rather. Joyful about Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you love him? Amen. How do you love him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. You're going to see how much you really love him. Do you want to be like him? Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> Matthew 20, verses 29 to 34. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. Now, let me give you another peek into my study. You will never, ever, ever see me put a scripture up there just to fill the time, ever. Any scripture I put up there, it has a specific meaning and we have to get it. I don't use filler scriptures. I don't just put a scripture there because it's leading to the main one, so let's let them see. No, 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 no. Everything I put up there, it has meaning because the Holy Spirit said use this one. This is very important to know. They departed from Jericho. A great multitude followed him. All right. And behold, two blind men two blind men sitting by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed by because they couldn't see, so they had to hear. They heard that Jesus passed by, cried out saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. All right, I'm going to say this. This is going to help your prayer life, okay? Uh, now, I'm going to go on, then I'll mention it. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace, but they cried the more. Anybody tried to stop your cry to Jesus? Yes. Saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Remember that, have mercy on us. O oh Lord, thou son of David. Remember that, because I'm going to come back to that. And Jesus stood still. Woo! <laughs> Have mercy on us, son of David. Did you see that? O oh Lord. 
thou son of David. When Jesus heard them say that, what did he do? He stood still. Why did Jesus stop in his tracks? Because whenever you address his majesty, his kingship, David being king, Jesus, that's the only way Jesus can be king is if he came through a kingly lineage. And King David, he came through the lineage of King David. So whenever they said, oh Lord, thou son of David, when you call on his majesty, you get his attention. Oh, I hope somebody's writing this down. When you go to him, King Jesus, you get his attention because now you're addressing his majesty, his authority, his kingship, his lordship. Jesus stood still and called them and said, what will ye that I shall do unto you? My, did you call me king? When you call me king like that, you want something. When you call me king, you're literally saying that you realize you belong to me. When you call somebody king, you're calling them king, not out of reverence, but to say you're king and to say you are Lord. Remember they said, oh Lord, thou son of David. Lord means what? Owner. Owner. You know it means owner. Even today, you have a landlord who owns the property. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. So you are Lord, thou son of David. What do you want me to do? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be open. The Holy Spirit stopped me right here and said, whether the blindness is physical or spiritual, we must be receptive of those who request assistance in seeing, which brings understanding. If I can't see, I can't understand. If I don't see, I don't understand. This is so very important. I'm gonna say something that it might take you a little while to agree with, but don't waste time with people that you're witnessing to and they begin to battle with you. We, we, don't, we, don't, we don't battle. That's what we don't do. Jesus stood his ground. When they came against the, he stood his ground. And once he finished standing his ground, he was done. Stand your ground, proclaim Jesus, testify, but I'm not going to get in an argument with you. That's what I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I don't care what they say. Oh, no, you just scared because you know I'm right. Really? Confrontations aren't about winning or losing. Confrontations are about standing your ground. So if you have confrontations within your marriage, within your job, within your community, whatever confrontations, don't try to win. Just stand your ground and be done with it. That's all Jesus did. To simply stand your ground. Because I don't care if it looks like they're quote unquote winning during the race. Nobody wins during the race. Today, Super Bowl Sunday, nobody is going to win at halftime. Nobody. I don't care how it looks at halftime, it's the end that determines the winner. So you can look like you winning now against me. I don't care. I'm telling you about Jesus. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't think Jesus is all this, that, and other. No problem. No problem. We are close to the end of the fourth quarter right now. 
You might not believe me now, but when that final buzzer sounds, when that trumpet sounds, and the dead in Christ rises, then we who are remaining will be caught up to meet Jesus in the air. And the Bible says, there will be forever with the Lord. So with that, I leave you with your argument. So, if you want to see, I'll help you. But if you want to argue, I'm not the one for you. Just that simple. Somebody said, well, you know, I, I've been working on this person and just working on them to get saved and working on them. No, they working you. You're not working on them. They working you. And now you tired. You don't even sing that song no more. I don't feel no ways tired. You're like, no, I'm tired. I do feel some ways tired. Mm-hmm. Running for the Lord a long time, and I'm tired now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why do they want to see? Why do they want to see? I don't care why they want to see. It doesn't matter. Compassion says, I see a need that I can meet, and I'm going to help. Amen. That's, perfect. That's it. I see a need that I can meet, I'm, I'm gonna help it. Well, you know, I'm just, I'm just one of the ones, you know, I don't like bothering folk. You know, I see people need things and stuff, but I don't like bothering folk, because you know, sometimes you don't know how people are. Whew, Holy Spirit says, I was not going this way at all. Holy Spirit just said this to me, that's why you reap what you sow. That's why you feel like nobody loves you. Nobody wants to help you. Nobody is, because you don't do nothing for nobody. You reaping what you sow. People always, people like this, and people don't want to treat you right, and people don't, that's because you, you reaping what you have sown. So watch your testimony. Because your testimony shows up what, what you've been sowing. Yeah. People are a mess. People just, they don't care nothing about you. And who do you care about? Yes. Amen. 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 It's so easy to sow the seeds of people get on my nerves, I don't want to have nothing to do with them. But then when that thing grows and you have to eat that fruit, you don't like it. You don't like it. You want to know what you're going to eat later? It's the seeds you're planting now. Okay. I'll go back to the scripture since y'all didn't too much like that. So Jesus had compassion. Oh Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Stop. What can I do? That our eyes will be open. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. Hallelujah to God. This is a question to every one of us. Do requests for what you're anointed, gifted, and expected to do for others cause you to have compassion or complaint? You're already anointed, you're already gifted, and you're expected to do it for others. What, what, is, what does it cause you? You get a text. Can you help me? With, oh, goodness gracious. Get on my nerves all the time. So do you have compassion or complaint? I 
I mean, I'm just repeating what the Holy Spirit told me to put on the thing. <laughs> what do you have? When God himself anointed you to do it, why did you think he anointed you to do it? Just so you could say I'm anointed? You are not anointed. You are anointed to do. You're gifted to do. I've never, ever, ever once heard somebody ask, or uh, even me, ask AJ, AJ, do you mind rapping for this thing? I never heard him say, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, I got, I got like three jobs, and I'm in school. And, I mean, I'll, I'll have to get something together and stuff. This is, I don't know, Dad. I'll, I'll have to see. I'll have to see. I'll have to see. <laughs> Never. He's like, yeah, when you want it. How do, you, how, do, how do you feel when somebody asks you to do what God purposed for you to do? That's your purpose on earth. Somebody wants you to do it. You tired of it? You tired of your anointing? You want God to give it to somebody else? You tired of your gifting? I know this is so last minute, but will you sing? Sing? Now? This? What's wrong with your face? What's all of this? You're anointed to do that. What's with the face? You know what? Keep the face. I'll sing. Somebody come to you, ooh, mighty woman of God. Mm-hmm, what you want? You want something. You don't call me mighty woman of God. You want something. That is in how Jesus responded to, to Lord, thou son of David. He stopped. What you want me to do? That's compassion. I know. Help us, Lord. Help us, help us, help us. Do we have more complaint than compassion for our own brothers and sisters? What do people get from you? More complaint or more compassion? I'm not asking what you get from others. If I would have said from others, you'd be like, that's right. No, what's, what is right is what are people getting from you? Complaint or compassion? Nah, 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 nah. You know, if people started just burning up for no reason, you would really, really, really say something's going on. My, my dear brother, may I borrow your Bible? I promise to give it back. Oh yeah, you're a real man of God. Your Bible is used. <laughs> you are a real man of God. Um, I'm just needing to find some. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Numbers 11 and 1. And when the people complain, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it and his anger was kindled kindle ain't somebody's name kindle is when uh, you know you're trying to light something and it finally lights that's called kindle it is now kindled so his anger was lit you heard people say i was lit they got it from god <laughs> <laughs> there it is right there my brother I can give it back to you they didn't put it up for me and when the people complained it displeased the Lord and the Lord heard it and his anger was lit kindled and the fire 
of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of the camp, parts of the camp. God burned the people up because they did one thing. So let me ask again. When people require what you're already anointed, called, appointed, and expected to do, are you about to be fired? You have compassion or complaint? Oof. Holy Spirit just said this to me. God is tired of people that he called to do something complaining about what they asked him to cause them to be able to do. You wanted to be anointed. You wanted God to use you. Oh God, I'll do what you want me. I'll give you my whole life. Oh God, use me. Take me, Lord. Every part of me. Take my heart and every other part. All of this stuff. And then as soon as he wants to use it, man, please, I'm tired. I'm just, I don't feel like being, being by. Okay, I'll do it because you ask. God is tired. All right. Now, let's look at this. Do we have more complaint than compassion for our own brothers and sisters? Listen at this. Do we seek God for more power so we can show people what we can do rather than having compassion on them as Jesus did? I want to prophesy. Why do you want to prophesy? I want to to really know everything the Holy Spirit is saying. You know, I want to be more accurate. Why? So you can have compassion or so you can have a fan? I want people to say, I'm powerful. I want people to say, ooh, that person there, see. When I go in their presence, I be, I be praying for I go in their presence and say, Lord, forgive me. Don't show them what I've been doing. What, what is that? Why? Please tell me why. We want, we want more power. God, I want to be closer to you. I want to be more sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Why? The Holy Spirit is sensitive to the needs of the people. So to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit means I'm more sensitive to the needs of the people. I got, I got this course on my website called Minister in the Spirit. And one of the things I teach there is whenever I'm about to preach, I don't pray for myself. I don't have to pray for myself. The reason why God keeps, the Holy Spirit keeps giving me things and these powerful things and how God uses me all over the place, one of the main things I do is I pray for the people who I'm going to preach for. I don't pray for myself. I pray for the people. Because if I pray for you all, God's going to give me what you need. And that's why it's always on that level. Because I know it's not me. Just as Jesus said, it's not me who does the works, it's the Father. I know this is not Shane Wall that we got y'all where you are now. It has zero to do with me. I'm simply a telephone. That is it. Y'all are just hearing the voice of God through me. Hallelujah. And everything else he's going to do today, because trust me, he's got some more good plans for us today. Amen. Amen. So. We have to have compassion as Jesus did. I'm just go on, just go on. Compassion can lead people to follow. He had compassion, touch, they received, and they followed. Just that simple. Jesus had compassion, he touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed. Some people are following Jesus because they can't see. They're blind. They're in darkness. We think they're just being stubborn. You don't want Jesus. See, that's what's wrong. You're on your way to hell. No, they can't see. Give them sight first. Sam, the Holy Spirit just told me to tell you this, and I want everybody else to hear this because I'm going to do this as well. But he he specifically said you. When you're dealing with somebody who is not saved, 
the very first thing we need to do, I'm just now learning this right this very moment, the first thing we need to do is say, Lord, open their eyes. Open their eyes. Before, we, hallelujah, before witnessing to them, say, Lord, open their eyes. Open their eyes, because they're not going to be able to see what I'm saying. They're not going to be able to see what I'm saying. Lord, open their eyes. First thing we need to say before witnessing. And I'm going to take that even in ministering, period. Even if I'm preaching or if I'm prophesying, word knowledge, word wisdom, whatever. Lord, open their eyes. Open their eyes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Compassion can lead people to follow Jesus. If we're not, hallelujah, if we're not compassionate to the blind, they will still be blind when they leave our presence. How can they follow Jesus and they're blind? Oh God, even now forgive us for every person, every person that we have left blind. And forgive us for everyone that we refuse to witness to. Father, I pray right now that you would thrust labors into the vineyard. Everyone that we miss, Father God, don't let it be the last time. Have mercy on us, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God just said, I heard it and I answered it. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This, this is, this is, oof. see, this is, this is how it's supposed to be. You hear and then you say, okay, Lord, get me straight. Right. Y'all just saying quite a bit because while I'm getting these messages, sometimes I have to get up and just walk and say, Father, Jesus, forgive me, Lord God, Abraham, Moses, Noah. Lord, forgive me, Jesus, please, Father. I am so sorry. I, I didn't know it. And then the Holy Spirit says to me, you, you, you're not guilty of what you don't know. He has to always kind of bring me back to that. You didn't know. I'm like, forgive me anyway, please. I, hey, shoot, this stuff is, is, is strong. It's strong. All right, okay. Um, Mark 1, 39 through 42. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Talk about Jesus. Remember, there are no scriptures up here for nothing. He preached in his synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Woo! You see where the faith of this leper was? If you want to, you can heal me. <laughs> if you will, you can make me clean. Yeah. If you want to, you can do it. Right. <laughs> Let me teach you another secret. Anytime you see a prayer, somebody prayed and they got results in the Bible, you can pray it. Go to Father, if you want to do it, you can do it. That's what sometimes your, your faith is just right there. And if it's right there, pray where your faith is. I'm telling you, don't try to pray up here and you know your faith ain't way up here. Father, if you want to, you can do it. All right. And Jesus moved, that moved Jesus with what? Compassion. compassion. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will. Woo! In other words, I want to. Yeah. Jesus, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Couldn't even say the name without the touch. Jesus literally answered him. He answered their faith right on their level. If you want to, Jesus, you can make us clean. You can clean this leprosy off of us if you want to. He said, I will. I want to. 
be clean. Move with compassion. The reason why we don't get as much compassion is because we don't give, we don't talk to God right where we are, from where we are. We try to talk to him way up here again. And you know you're not up there. Talk to him where you are. Don't pray like, like you heard Pastor Hayward pray. And you know you're not on that level. I heard him say it to God, I believe, and nothing happens. God's like, that's not where you are. Pray from where you are. Well, Lord, really, I don't know what you're going to do. I really don't know what you're going to do, Lord. I'm in this situation. I mean, I could pull scriptures out, but I really don't know what you're going to do. Oh, Jesus has compassion on that. When you talk from right where you are. The blind man said, listen, we're going to address your kingship. The lepers said, we're going to address your will. Where are you? How do you? It's, and it's all according on how you see Jesus. I see you as king. I see you as, if, if you want to, you do it. Address Jesus how you see him, and he'll have compassion on you. I have to confess, I love teaching and preaching because what I just said, the notes aren't there at all. The Holy Spirit just gives it to me. So I'm I'm growing while I'm teaching because I'm getting this now along with all all of you. Hallelujah to God. Do we want to help? Amen. Yes. yes. Thank you. Mom. Do you really, really, really want to help? Yes. 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 No, be honest. Yes, Do you want to help or are you too busy? I mean, I got, I got to go, I got to go pick up Joshua. And then after I pick up Joshua, my, my son Joshua, then I got to go here and I, I'm rushing, or either I know he's going to want salad because he loves salad. What two-year-old loves salad? <laughs> but I know he loves salad, so I, I, I'm going to go by Zaxby's, and, uh, and I'm in the line. I'm going inside because the line outside too long. Go inside and see somebody. How you doing? I'm like, oh, goodness, I'm really in a rush. I really don't have time to talk because if you're late at OP, they charge you $10 for every five minutes that you're late. So I need to get there on time. Now she wants to talk. You know, I I don't want to bother you, but I've been uh, been going through something one that you can pray, Father God. Now somebody done skipped the line, got in front of me, so now I'm (laughs) even longer. Do we want to help? Do you even want to help? Compassion bridges what we can do with what we will do. Compassion is the bridge from what we can do to what we will do. If you are not compassionate, you're not going to do a thing. It's just about you and yours. I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm just too busy. I'm just too busy. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, all right. Go ahead. Now, with this, so many people are looking at themselves as the one. I got to take care of me and mine. It's all about me and mine. I mean, if I don't do it, who going to do it? Guys, like, I thought you said I was taking care of you. I thought you said I was your provider. Jehovah Chira, my provider. Now you saying if I don't provide, who going to (laughs) provide? You know, I... I don't think we really know that God is with us. Now I'm going to share something that might seem, uh, I don't even know what word to use. Gloria is the master of words. 
She says, well, I have to have a dictionary when I'm around there. And I love it because she makes me learn. So I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have a word for this one, Glory. But what happens is we don't realize how close Jesus is to us. We don't. For an example, if, <laughs> sounds funny. Maybe I'll use that word, funny. Sounds funny. But if you are alone and you burp, do you say excuse me? <laughs> if you're alone and you burp, do you say, or if you're alone and you poop, <laughs> do you say excuse me? Everybody in here is human. Everybody in here has done both. <laughs> at least a thousand times, at least. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but now, I do, and I'm, 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 just, I'm just using myself as an example so you can just see this example. I do, I say excuse me even if I'm alone because I'm never alone. So if I burp, I say excuse me because Jesus literally is right here. It's just that real to me. I say, oh, excuse me. Even if I'm not praying. I said that just to get you to realize Jesus is always here. When you're alone, you're never alone. Ever. I'm just, I'm just all by myself. Well, who are you talking to? I'm just all by myself, looking up to God. Oh, Jesus. Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you, ever. That was just a little, see, now you see, I, I, I don't know what to call that. It's not, not really, really word for that, but that's just what we should do. Know that he's always there and treat it just like that. If you knew he was always there, will we do some of the bad things that we do? We don't, we don't really think. We, we don't have it locked in our minds. He is here right now. Right now. You know why? You know why we don't feel that way? Because we walk by sight. We don't see him. If you saw Jesus all the time with you, you would be perfect. What's the difference? Right. That's good, sir. He's with you all the time. Yes, yes. What's the difference? Okay. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Immediately. So... Compassion produces healing. Doesn't matter if it's physical healing, if it's a hurt heart because of what somebody has done to an individual. It doesn't matter if your mind is tired, confused, if you are just depressed. It doesn't matter. Compassion brings healing. If somebody is sick around you, show compassion. Lord, open their eyes. I want to minister healing to them, but open their eyes so they can see first. It's spiritual eyes. So they're not walking by sight. Open their eyes. Open their eyes. Oh, and Holy Spirit just told me to tell you, you can pray that in your heart. You don't have to pray it out. You can just pray that in your heart because they'll, they don't understand that. Who you about to minister to, they're not going to understand if you say, Lord, open their eyes. They're like, what? Because they're thinking naturally, they'll start blinking their eyes, start like, what, what, what are you saying to open my eyes? It's just subconscious for humans. And they went away in a boat to a solitary place by themselves. Now, many people saw them going and recognized them. It's Jesus and disciples. And they ran there on foot from all the surrounding towns and they got there 
ahead of those in the boat. Now, you know you really want to see Jesus when you can beat a boat to where it's going. As Jesus landed, he saw a great crowd waiting and he was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd and he began to teach them many things. Many things. He went away in a boat to a solitary place, some place way off, some place secluded off somewhere. People saw him and recognized him, beat the boat there. Beat the boat there. Hungry for what Jesus could give. Hungry, hungry, hungry. And when he got there, when he landed, he saw, oh, he was moved with compassion, taught them many things. Didn't start healing, boom, 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 boom. People need to be taught. That's a part of opening the eyes. When you pray, thank you, Holy Spirit, for, for this, because when you pray and say, Lord, open their eyes, many times God will give us a word for them so they can see. Words open eyes. That's where we get the saying, and I said it earlier. You see what I'm saying? You need to understand. Insight is what understanding is. Revealed insight is what understanding is. And so in order for us to understand, there has to be an inner seeing to understand. Oh, I see now. You've heard that before. I see. Ah, in other words, I have the understanding. That's why Jesus taught before he healed. Very important. He taught. He taught them and healed. As we read earlier, he went and preached all about Galilee, and then what did he do? He and he cast out devils. Teach, heal. Teach, cast out. Teach, heal. Compassion causes us to teach the lost as if they're our own. As if they're our own. Oh. That's something that you will simply not see. That's why being a member of a church is so very important. You go to Israel now, you're not just going to see sheep just all out and no, 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 no. Shepherds are very, 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 very particular about their sheep. Very particular. You're not just going to see them just... Uh, uh, just one, just straight, no, you very rarely. And if you de do see one straight, you're going to see somebody coming to get it. Not too long after. Wow. That was the custom of that day. They took care of their sheep. They kept them right where they need to be. They made sure they were fed, made sure they were watered, whole nine yards. And so for Jesus to say it like this, sheep, all these people without a shepherd, it's unheard of. You won't even see one, but to see all these, like sheep without a shepherd, blew Jesus away, blew him away. He couldn't help but have compassion. All these sheep, no shepherd, running, beat us here. They're hungry. How many sheep do we see a day? Lost sheep. How many? We see. We just look at them, shake our heads. You know, that's a shame. They need to be in church somewhere. Well, then have compassion and go to them and say, hey, sweetheart, God bless. How you doing? I am so-and-so, so-and-so. Um, what's going on with your life? How can I help you? How can you help me? I mean, you got some money for, no, no, no. How can, how can I help you? What, what do you really need? What's going on in your life? I'd like to take you to my church. So I said, that's a little bold. How do gang members and leaders get gang members? They're bold.
that we, we're not in a world of just lollygoggy. No, 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 this is, is a lot of seriousness stuff going on. A lot of people just come and take him, folk. You come home and then your son tells you, I'm a part of this. What the devil? Then you think, where did I go wrong? Get it, as soon as you see it, get it, get to it. As if they're your own. You have to look at somebody that's a start sinner as if they're your brother or your sister. Have compassion on them, just like that. How far will we allow our compassion to go? How far? Does our compassion have a limit? Are y'all getting tired of the compassion message? Getting tired of it? And when the day was already far gone, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate and isolated place. And the hour is now late. Ah. I said, Lord, I didn't realize this. This is during the same time. Because now we're, we're, we're going into this. Send the crowds away. This is what the disciples said. Send the crowds away to go into the country and villages round about and buy themselves something to eat. I didn't realize that, you know, he's about to feed the 5,000. I mean, you can clearly see that. I didn't realize this was the same time. They ran this, that, and other. He taught them many things. And they had church for a long time because it, the, the, the day was already far gone. Jesus taught for because he was so compassionate. He taught them for a long time, and then it was getting late. And so the compassion here, the disciples' way of showing compassion was not the will of the Lord. Because he's like, the disciples like, go ahead and send them away now. It's getting late, Jesus. And so they can go in the country, around about villages, and get themselves something to eat. Wasn't the will of the Lord. Jesus still had compassion on them. Still had compassion. Compassion provides what God sees is best for everyone. Compassion provides what God sees is best for everyone. You need to get my brother because he did this, that, and the other, and it ain't right. God sees what's best for everybody because you wasn't right. You helped to cause the whole thing. So don't, don't, don't start now. You always like to point fingers. What did you do? to cause the argument? What did you do to cause the situation? It ain't just, it ain't just them. God is like, this, this, this whole thing is, 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 is both of y'all. Don't play. Don't act like you, oh, I'm the one that was done wrong. Were you done wrong because you started the whole thing? You started it, so don't play. But he replied to them, give them something to eat yourselves. Yes. Send them away. I, I, I know you got this great compassion. You had to teach them and everything. I understand that your heart is so beautiful, Jesus. Glory, glory be to God for you. But it is getting late. You done taught so long. Send the people away. You give them something yourself. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denarii, about $40 worth of bread? Now you know, $40 feeding 5,000 people, that's, ooh, bring back the days, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Worth of bread and give it to them to eat? A lot of people say Jesus was just so meek and lowly and, and the disciples, they were just so poor and stuff. They had enough money to buy food for everybody. So I don't know where people get this stuff that Jesus was just poor. He took up offerings. The Bible says so. He saw the widow put the mite in there. You heard the widow's mite. He took up offerings. Matter of fact, Jesus stood right there to see what everybody was giving. That's how he knew. The Bible says he, he was there and he saw what they put in. He was looking at what everybody was putting in. You let me doing tithes and offerings come stand up here by the basket, see what everybody put in. Oh, uh, go back. Dude, you got a full time job. I know you ain't just putting no $2 in this basket. Uh, go back. Come on, y'all, keep the music going. Go back. 
Uh huh. Two of them got out of line because they see I'm standing. No, that's what. If I did that, I'd have two members. <laughs> that's it. But rather, we'd have two members here in the church. That'd be it. But Jesus did that. Some of y'all now cheating God. You getting your uh, tax refund? Just spending everything. Ain't gave God a penny. I give on my increase. Anything I'm increased, I give it. I give it. Amen. <sighs> Might as well give it to God. Or else you're going to spend it all on something, it's going to be gone anyway. At least sow the seed to God. Tithes and offerings. That wasn't no plug. <laughs> I was waiting for the full laugh to come out. No. Because... We don't beg here. We don't have to beg here. Not at all. I just teach. You do it or not. It's between you and God. We'll find out if you've been lying or not when you stand before Jesus. But ooh, I thought she was giving her tithes. Because I don't, I, I don't go in the back and just go through the list and see who's giving tithes. I don't do that. That's, that's between you and God. If you're not giving your tithes and your offerings, that's simply between you and God. I know one thing, you won't be a leader in here over a department or, or in a department with, with a, 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 a specific title and you're not giving tithes and offerings because you curse with a curse and you ain't going to be cursing with no curse, no department in here. Okay? So I'm glad I said that. You need to look at the, the leaders. I chill as you do. She's the accountant. I ain't getting into that because I get too upset. And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had looked and knew, they said five loaves and two fish. Okay, cool. Then he commanded the people all to recline on the green grass by companies. Groups, in other words. So they threw themselves down in ranks of hundreds and fifties with the regularity of an arrangement of beds of herbs looking like so many garden plots. That's based on history. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven. Ooh, I just love this part right here. I'm, it's, it, we're at the end. We're coming to a close now. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he, Jesus, looked up to heaven and praising God, gave thanks and break the loaves and kept on giving them to the disciples to set before the people. And he also divided the two fish among them all. So, the keys to compassion are found in this one verse. You ready? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Be willing to supply the need based on your ability. All I have is five loaves and two fish. This is all I have. Compassion. Be willing to supply the need based on whatever you're able to do. This is all I'm able to do. This is it. I know I can, and I, I, I know there are people who have an awesome heart. You can tell because they'll say this, you know, I really wish I could do more. I really do, but this is all that I have. Another person like, this is wonderful, thank you. Be willing to give based on the ability that you have. Number two, take hold. Take hold of what you have been given to bless the people. What did Jesus do? He took the five loaves. At first, he was willing. He said, oh, don't send them away. He was willing. Number two, take hold of what you have. He took the five loaves and the two fish. Take hold of what you have been given to bless the people. Take hold of it. That's very, very, very important. 
In other words, I, I'm, I'm going to separate. This is what I have. So I'm going to separate this. Go dig in your purse or, or, or out your pocket and, and take hold of it. What you about to do. Even if it's time, go ahead and put it on your calendar. I'm going to set aside time to do this. Take hold of it. This is very important. The, I've never seen this before in my life. You will not find this on anybody's internet. God gave this to me directly. Number three, he said this, praise God and be thankful to him for what you have regardless of the obvious amount. What did Jesus do? He looked up to heaven, praising God. Got 5,000 people out there with five loaves and two fish. Father God, I praise you. This is compassion. Praise God and be thankful to him for what you have, regardless of the obvious amount. It's not much. Sometimes not much is all you need for what God's going to do. Not much is more than enough. Number four, break what you have. Why? To indicate what you're preparing to do. I'm not going to keep this. You with somebody. Marshawn is at the table. And somebody wants more bread. So Marshawn breaks his bread, and that's a sign I'm about to give you some of my bread because I know you want some. Break it off. Break me off a piece of that. (laughs) Break what you have to indicate you're preparing to give what you have. That's the last thing you do. Give what you have. What did Jesus do? He gave thanks, he broke the loaves, and then he kept on giving it to them. Those are the keys to compassion. Be willing to supply. Lord, whatever I can do, I'll do it. And Father, what you have given me is this. So you take hold of it. Then so Father, I praise you. I thank you that you've given this to me. It may not seem like much to others, but you've given this to me. And so, Father, tomorrow at 4 o'clock, I'm going to you breaking it off and then fulfill what you have said. Give it. So many people have refused to be and to do what God has called them to do. Especially in terms of what Jesus did. And again, that is why the Holy Spirit said that this is for us at this time. Why? And they all ate and were satisfied. That did it for me right there. That did it for me right there. They all ate and were satisfied. You might call it a little, but somebody going to eat. They're going to be satisfied. Then I still going to be hungry. And they took up 12 small hand baskets full of broken pieces from the loaves and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. In other words, that was just the men. They also had women and children there. The forgotten compassion of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, now we remember. Now we remember. We're going to continue to remember to be compassionate. So, Father, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. You have given us this word today because this is what we've been lacking. We've been lacking in our compassion. Oh, Lord, even within our own households, you say we've been lacking compassion. Forgive us everything we've said, everything we've done that has lacked 
compassion, the compassion that was faithfully and clearly shown to us by our big brother, Jesus Christ. Forgive us, forgive us, forgive us. Place us back into your care. Place us back into the care that we are to show. You always care for us. Place us back. Help us to get back. Show us what we need to do to get back into your care. How you care for people so you can use us to do so. We've lacked in it, Lord. We have. We've lacked. Forgive us. And Father, we know we can't help every single person. We can't even help every single person we meet. But we thank you, Lord God, that there are those who you have destined for us to be compassionate. We thank you for giving us your will and your word. And we're going to go forth and do exactly what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The last thing the Holy Spirit said to me this morning before coming here, he said one of the main hindrances to compassion is when the ones to be compassionate have troubles of their own. That's what hinders people from being compassionate is because the one who's supposed to be compassionate, they got troubles going on in their own life. Holy Spirit said that to me. He said that's the number one reason why people are not compassionate. Child, I got stuff going on my own self. Wow, 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 wow. Jesus was going to be crucified. I guarantee your trouble's nowhere near that. I mean, that was Jesus. Yes, he was a human being at that point. Literally asked the Father over and over, please don't make me do this. But then he finally said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So don't act like Jesus was just, oh, please, this ain't gonna, this would be a walk in the park. They ain't gonna do nothing but just this and stab me, y'all. Oh, no, 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 no. So what am I supposed to do about my own troubles and my own problems? I mean, I do have to take care of my family. I can't do for everybody. Nobody asked you to do for everybody. It was just that one person that you like, I don't have time for her. That was all it was, just that one person. If you're here now and you're not saved, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. And you want to give your life to God. Oh, I would love to pray with you. I would love to pray with you. If you say, I want a relationship with Jesus. I, I want to get close to Jesus. If you're here Please stand up. I want to pray with you specifically. If you want to give your life to the Lord, anyone else, stand. God wants you. God wants you. I don't care what people have said about you. Please, I don't, I don't, I don't even care about that. God wants you. Stand if you want to give your life to God. You're saying, God, if I give you my life, I can go to heaven. You can, we can't go to, I can't go to heaven if he doesn't have my life. Mm, I got to get some things straight and somebody in here now. You're saying, I got to get some things straight in my life before I can get saved. No, no, no. When your car breaks down, you don't wait till it start acting right and then take it to the mechanic. You take it now. If you're not saved, give your life to God. Let him fix it. If you could fix it, it would have already been fixed. You done tried and tried and tried to fix your life. Won't happen. Come to Jesus. Give your life to God. 
Just stand. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do right now is just stand to say, yes, Lord, I want to give you my life. Even those who are listening and watching, stand. Oh, God needs you. Hmm. Holy Spirit just said, God needs you. He needs you. God has a plan for our lives. We would not be alive today if God didn't want to do something in our lives. If you love Jesus, give him your life. If you love Jesus, give him your life. If you love Jesus, give him your life. Uh, there's somebody over here on this side. You really want to stand and you know you need to stand, but you, you're going through a mental battle right this very, I can come put my hands on you. I know exactly who you are. You're going through a mental battle. You're going back and forth in your mind, trying to convince yourself of saying, well, you know, I ain't, I ain't all that bad and this, that, and other. Or, you know, I can, you know, maybe I'll just sit in it. No. Stand. He said, stand. If we are ashamed to own him here on the earth, Jesus said, when you get to heaven, I'm going to be ashamed to own you of my Father in heaven. If you're ashamed to own me here, I'll be ashamed to own you there. Don't be ashamed. Somebody said, I got saved. I got saved, but you have left him, and now you need to come back. So just come back. That's all. Just say, okay, I'm going to stand. I need, I need a do-over. I need a do-over. I had to do that in my life. I had to pray as if I had never gotten saved ever. I had to go right before God and say, Father God, I am so sorry. Forgive me. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Forgive me, Lord. If you got to come back, to, please come back. Jesus is coming sooner now than he's ever, ever. We are literally seeing Bible prophecy on CNN. It's coming to pass. Jesus is coming soon. He's coming back. And when he comes back, if we're not saved, if we haven't given our lives to God, there will be no heaven in our future. None whatsoever. So if you think you got time, I've, I've got to give you the news. We don't have time. I was thinking about my own life. Last week, I think it was. I'm like, now, Lord, am I doing everything that you need me to do now? Because when, when Jesus comes back, I'm talking about Shane Wall. When Jesus comes back, I, I, I've got to be making sure that I am on exactly what you got me on. I had to talk with him and say, let me make sure I'm doing everything that you want me to do. I can't play, I, I can't play with the, I got one life. That is it. It's either going to heaven or hell. That is it. I am very assured of that. If you have 1% doubt, just 1%, that you might not make it to heaven, I'd stand on them feet just as fast as I can because this is not a game. God, the Bible says, God is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Y'all need to hear this. Some people say, well, God already, he already knows. Some people going to hell. God, God, I mean, that's just his will. Some people going, that's a lie. God doesn't want one person going to hell ever, ever. God never intended for man to go to hell and burn in the lake of fire. Never. Not one time, not one individual. He, his only will is that all come all come to repentance some people don't believe in him some people say well I got time and then they die before the time golly we can't play with our lives 
You can have a perfect driving record and some drunken idiot runs into you and kills you. You driving perfectly. Somebody else, it's, it's just crazy. I'm not saying, and again, I have to say this all the time just to clear up demonic thoughts. I don't say that to scare anybody. The blood of Jesus covers that it won't happen to not one of us in Jesus' name. I'm just saying these things happen and it ends lives on contact, on contact. So if you have any type of doubt, I would stand. Now, if you sin this week and you feel badly, if you've already repented and you're not going to do it anymore, don't stand. I'm not talking about that. You have a relationship with God and you're like, I mucked up. I really mucked up. I repent. I'm not going to do it anymore. You good. I'm talking about those who know you have strayed from God. You have strayed. And you need to come back. Stand. And again, you can't sneak to Jesus. Don't say, well, I'll just say it in my seat. No, no, no. Those, those who are standing, come up here. I want to pray with you. If you're standing, come up here. I want to pray with you. And some of you who are coming, you need miracles in your life. And God said, y'all can come on down. God said he's going to give you miracles. There are miracles coming. Yes, sir. There are a few of you who are up here. You literally stepped into a season of miracles for your life. And you know, it, it, it makes sense because now that God has your life, now he can do things with your life. I can't ask somebody to do something with my cell phone if I don't give them my cell phone. How can we ask God to do something with our lives if we won't give him our lives? It just doesn't work like that. All right, this is your time that God is giving you. Jesus could come back before the Super Bowl, which is, which is fine with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These nine people up here are literally secured. If Jesus were to come back right now, y'all secured. Before you even pray, you're secured. You made the step. You're about to pray. Do you know in the Bible, I don't know if y'all really realize this. Do you know in the Bible? You will not find it in the Bible where somebody prayed a prayer of salvation. Not once. Probably never even thought of that. See, God looks at the heart. Of course, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. From that, we derive this prayer. But the decision is already made in your hearts when you came up here. So you're secured to go to heaven right now. But we're going to do exactly what the word says. You're going to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Anyone else before we pray want to come up? Is there anyone else? Don't let this moment pass. Please don't let this moment pass. I'll wait and do it when I get home. Really? After God specifically gave instructions to come now? God will have to, Jesus will have to judge that situation. Because he said, come now. Hallelujah to God. Anyone else? Okay, those who are up here, lift your hands to God. Close your eyes and bow your heads. You're right now in the very presence of God himself. And you're going to talk directly to God for yourself. I'll give you words to say, but it's coming from your heart. It's coming directly from your heart. Repeat after me. Know that you're looking directly at God himself because God is looking directly at you one on one. So from your heart, 
Repeat after me with your hands lifted, your eyes closed, and your heads bowed. Say, Father, I come before you right now by Jesus Christ. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Jesus died for me and you raised him from the dead. Raise me right now from the death of all my sins. Give me new life. Lord Jesus, come live in me and live through me. I belong to you. Thank you for have compassion on me. And now I will have compassion on others. Father, thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I will not let you down, for I belong to you, not to myself, nor to anyone else, but I belong only to you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now I want you, come on, let's praise God. Let's be Jesus. what is so sweet to me you remember when I first got up and I told you that even though the song is stopped the angels were still singing the Holy Spirit said to me this is why the angels were singing this is why they were singing they were singing and worshiping God because they knew the souls would come to God. Lift your hands up. I'm going to come and I'm going to lay hands on each one of you. And God is going to impart mm, some spiritual thing to you, is what the Holy Spirit said. It's a part of what you need. And some of you, I see like jewels. I see like jewels. It's, it's like they're being poured on the tops of some of you on your heads which symbolize the blessings just receive lift your hands close your eyes bow your head Father God give them exactly what you want them to have now in Jesus' name now in Jesus' name give it to them for your glory now in Jesus' name right now oh God stirs gifts in you in Jesus' name gifts of the spirit in you flows in Jesus' name fire right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name by your might and by your power. God, give him every single thing that you have for him in Jesus' name. Every single thing that you have for him, give it to him. I pray in Jesus' name. Touch him, I pray. Give it to him. Father God, stir it up in him now in Jesus' name. Fire! for your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Touch him, I pray, for your glory in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Stir it up in her now in Jesus' name. Fire in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. By your might and by your power in Jesus' name. Come on, let's praise it. You can return to your seat. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, God. Bless you, bless you. Bless you, son. Bless you. Thank God for you. This is my mentee. This is my mentee. Just had our first mentee mentor session. Thank God for you. Hallelujah. Bless you, God. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. My dear sister, my dear brother, thank y'all for coming. Where are y'all from? I am from Batesburg. Batesburg? Yes. Columbia. Columbia. How did y'all hear about our church? 
a friend of ours was talking to me, and she had talked to you, and I actually went online and have listened to several of your sermons. And oh, praise I, God. I listened to your teaching. Praise you God. Teach, you teach to understand. Thank you, Lord. Because you say with all you get to get understanding. Get understanding. If I don't have understanding, then I can't show Well, you better that. come up here and preach. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. And you? Um, I'm Minister Bradham. I got a prison ministry. Praise and, God. And um, I also been in prison some years ago. Wow. But um, glory be to God. Um, we are for the underdog. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, uh, matter of fact, I was in prison last night. Mm. And um, they were shot on the choir, so I jumped on the choir. Wow. You know, and, uh, just trying to fit in. That's right. And um, did the altar call show forth love. And, um, wow. Um, Sid Rod, you know. Sid Rod? Oh, you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah. After, yes. Right, Sid Rod. And, um, oh, that's how you heard uh, of me uh, through Sid Rod? Uh, Melissa. 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 Uh, Mara, from Lexington. you talk from Lexington. You talked to her two hours on the phone. I did. Right, she's a, she's a good friend of mine. I'm sorry. She's a good friend of mine. Okay. Right. Oh, Missy. Yeah, Missy. Missy. Yeah, right. Woo! You talk about a prophetess. I've never seen her before. Oh yeah, well, uh, we've been here. friends for some years now. Now she does not miss. Yeah. She is it. on it. Oh yes. Wow. And, um, I um, spoke with her yesterday afternoon. And okay. And uh, we pointed to each other. That is awesome. You know, and uh, we always try to give each other a heaven hand in Christ. Praise God. And also, uh, Patricia, too. We exactly. Yes. Oh, praise God. Yeah. Well, great. Can, can I minister to y'all? Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, y'all do the standing up. All right now. Oh, yeah, let's go forth. Well, the Lord told me to tell you that what he has placed inside of you is not just for one area, but it's for several areas. And God said that he's going to send you. I see you in a car and I just see you going to simply being led of God because God said, I have equipped you for the travel. There are different places God needs you to go. You're going to just simply have to go. And when you go there, God said, then I'll give you what to say. Amen. It's nothing that you can prepare. Right. Right. Amen. He's going to give it to you right there at that moment. And God said, then it will be fresh. And God said, because uh, you, you think, and sometimes if, if you think, about it, you might, oh, I don't know if that really fits this person. So God said, I'm going to give it to you right then and there so you won't have time to think. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So now is the time for stretch your hands to God. Amen. Stretch them to God. Yes, Lord. Father, I thank you for your son. I bless you, Father God, for what you've spoken. And Father, I see gold. I see gold in his mouth. I thank you for the words that you have given him to speak that, as you're saying, have blessed thousands because of the trickle down. And I bless you and I thank you, Father, that he will continue to be a blessing. That that's in him, that that you're imparting now. Mm. Even the implant that you're giving him now, rejoice in it. Yes, for Lord. God gives you according to his will for your life. Jesus. And I thank you and I bless you Glory. that God crowns you Amen. with the authority against demons. God said, my son asked me for authority against certain spirits. Yes, Lord. And God said, now you have that authority. And oh, okay, he told me to look at you. You, you put your hands down and stuff now. He said, look at you and tell you this. Your words carry the authority. You don't have to feel anything. Amen. You don't have to sense or feel anything. Your words carry the authority. God said, you've been in my presence enough to have my heart. Now your words will carry authority because you're going to speak according to my heart. Amen. So it's not a sensation or a feeling. Like, Ooh, I feel the glory. You don't have to feel the nothing. Just speak authoritatively from what God has already placed in your heart. 
and you're going to see change happen. God said, I, my heart, you know so well that I can show you the hearts of others without you feeling some type of way about them. So God is going to allow you to see the hearts of people. Huh? He said, because you do have compassion. You do have compassion. God said, and I'm not saying this because you said you've been in prison before, because some people have been in prison, they are hardened. But God said, you have compassion on people because you know who you are and where you've come from. You've allowed that to be a a, a blessing to you more so than a stone front, as some people do. So God bless you, my brother. God bless bless you. you. Thank God for you. Glory to your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yeah, it's real. So your name is Patricia, he said. Patricia, with a K. Patricia. Wow, that's that's neat. Patricia. While I was hugging him, the Lord said to tell you that from your spirit, what your spirit says to him is the reason why you like prayer is because it connects you to him. It's the connection with God that you love. And the Lord told me to tell you, now he's about to take you in the realms of prayer that, now he said you've heard about, and I don't know if you read about them, but he said you've heard about realms of prayer. And there there, there are higher heights, and I keep doing circles because that's what I see. And I see you going from level to level to level. And the reason why God says I'm going to do that for you is because there are things internationally that concern me that there are some people who just, they don't care about. They don't care about. But God said, I'm gonna reveal things to you. I see you in prayer with your Bible. And with your Bible open, God will give you certain scriptures to speak to certain countries and even to certain individuals. Because the way you intercede is different. It's absolutely different from anything I've seen before. Because when we think intercession, we really, really think it. But your intercession is, is more calm. It's more just on point, you know, it's just this, and, and you just speak, and, and, and this. And so that means something to God. It really means something to God. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it means to him, because you really care about the individual. And you care, no, I'm talking about literally care, not like, oh yeah, I care for you, no, just like a caretaker cares for someone. I mean, physical hands-on. You literally care just like that from your heart and from your spirit because your soul has made that decision to do so. And so God grants you wings. He grants you wings. I didn't know why, so I was waiting on what the wings are for so that you can go into the other realms. Makes sense now. Oh, so God says you don't control the wings. He does. He's going to take you, and that should bring relief to you because you don't have to say, well, how do I get to the other realms? God said, no, they just, they they will start flapping. They'll take you up. You don't have to, you you never have to be concerned. Like, Lord, am I, no, no, it's going to happen automatically. And so now God says, I have to prepare your mind for it because you're going to see things you've never seen before. You're about to have visions that's going to wake you up. Jesus. Ah. And so, Father God, as you're telling me now, I anoint her for this new place in the ha, mighty and matchless name Jesus. of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, 
Mm. And God said to tell you this is not a season. This is permanent. This is permanent. Come on and bless God. Thank you, Father. Bless you for your perfection. For your love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. College students, don't worry if the calf is closed. We always give you cash to go get your meal. So don't even worry about it. Who else is here? And this is your first time being here. First, first, first time ever being here. Stand up. If this is your first time here, stand up. Somebody say, you can minister to people just like that. I've been preaching 30, because this is 35 years. If I can't do this, then I need to go work next door at the pie factory. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hey, sweetheart, what's up? Hey. It's all good? Mm-hmm. You in school? Oh, yes, sir. Where? SC State. Yeah. We are SC State. <laughs> all y'all at State? Yes, sir. All right, what do you major? Speech pathology. Woof. Oh, yeah, you speak like you want <laughs> speech pathology. That's great. What do you want from God? Um, I just want to grow. You want to grow in faith more. That is awesome. Make sure, is my wife in here? Make sure my wife gets uh, your email address. I'm writing a book now called The Seven Levels of Faith, How to Soar from, what, No Faith to Perfect Faith. I'm going to email you a copy of the book when I think, don't you share it with nobody else. All right? I'm going to send that to you. But the Lord wants you to know that he's changing your love life. All right? He's changing your love life. Why you look over here like that when I said that? Man? Right? You just listen. I'm going to leave it alone. She put on, y'all, y'all together? Y'all boyfriend and girlfriend? Oh, no. Now you put your arm around him like that. Man. No, I'm like, change your love life and you look over. All right, man. <laughs> But no, the Lord said he's changing your love life. What he's going to cause you to do is he's going to cause you to see people who need genuine love. That is who you are attracted to. You're attracted to people who need genuine love and they lack that. Be careful, though. Be very, very, very careful because it doesn't mean that you're supposed to be in a relationship with them. So some people that God takes from your life it's God that took them from your life. Because God said, I have to protect you because of the love change that's about to happen. Your life of love is about to change drastically. Now you just told me to tell you in, in the scriptures, start reading love. Everywhere in the Bible where you see love, read that. He's going to open love to you in such a way that people your age should not be able to understand. You're going to minister love to people. You're going to know exactly what people need, and you'll be able to just give it to them. Thirteen people this year. 13 people this year will remain alive who were about to commit suicide because of something that you're going to say to them. 13 people. This year. Thank you, Lord. The only reason why you looked at her and said, I'm about to cry, and the reason why that touched you is because of how real it is. It's very real. Jesus said, the words I speak, their spirit and their life. So what I'm speaking to you is coming straight from Jesus. That's why you can feel them. It's not like, oh, that's so precious. I get to do that. No, you can feel it. It's, oh, it just changed. I was about to say something. The Holy Spirit said her love life just changed. It just changed. Remember I said it was going to change? In my mind, I was thinking, you know, it just changed. So now you have that gift. Lift your hands, close your eyes, and say, Lord, I belong to you, not to me. Use me. Love through me. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Hallelujah. Glory to your Lord. Mm. What's your name? Maya. Maya. That's amazing. I have a niece named Maya, and we are pregnant with a Maya. Our little girl that's about to come. Amen. And what's your name? D-Asia. D-Asia. Where are you from? Charleston. Oh, you from Charleston. Okay. <laughs> so what are you majoring in? Um, civil engineering. Civil engineering? What in the world is that? <laughs> <laughs> like when they design like bridges and roads. Oh, I was talking about bridges today. Did you think about that when I said you did? All right. So you want to build bridges. <laughs> no, what do you really want to do? Well, I want to be that and I want to be an architect. Oh, you want to be an architect? Yeah. That, why? Because I want to give back to the community and help build up, like, new homes and playgrounds and good places for people. Ooh, to okay. So you, okay. That is real cool. Okay. When do you want to be a millionaire? If you had the choice, when would you want to be a millionaire, realistically? Realistically, probably like when I'm like 30 or something. In your 30s? Yeah. Okay. How old are you now? 18. 18? All right. Would you like for me to pray that you become a millionaire like in your late 20s? Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. That's what God wants to do for you. That's what he wants to do for you. Now, the reason why God wants to make you a millionaire is, and are you really going to have to get this? I haven't heard this before, ever. But he wants you to be a millionaire because it's going to set you around people that he can talk to through you. That's it. You can enjoy the money. He's going to let you do that. Give your tithes and offerings to your church. Right. I got you on that one. She said, you're right. I got you on that one. <laughs> Do that, but he, he's making you a millionaire to put you in a certain group of people. All right? And you're going to remain in that certain group of people because they need a change. They need a change. Do you have your passport yet? Uh, no. no, you need to get a passport because God can't open up international um, doors for you unless you're prepared. Yeah, international. Yeah, you, you, you just here. Yeah, you're going to have to travel, all right? Now, I don't want nothing but A's and B's from you. Yes, sir. Don't play with me. <laughs> yes, sir, I'm serious. Okay, nothing but A's and B's. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay, no more. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I ain't going gonna, gonna to put your business out here. I already see it, but I'm not going to put your business out here. Just A's and B's. Okay, put the phone down and put the everything else down. And get in the book. <laughs> she said, wow, he got you on that. Put it down. Get in the books. Stop making everybody else get the attention that you're supposed to get. You can be seated. <laughs> Come on, let's praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, you can sit down, Maya. Bless you, bless you, bless you. No, I ain't, no, I ain't even got started. What's your name? My name is Jaquez. All right, though. Yes. Full sentence. My name is Jaquez. So what are you majoring? Drama. <laughs> Listen, I'm the preacher in here. <laughs> I got the mic. No, I'll just play drama. <laughs> so you're majoring in drama. Yes, sir. Henderson Davis, players. Yes, sir. So you like acting. I love it. You love acting. Why do you like acting? Why do you love acting? Hmm. No, you said you loved acting. <laughs> no, you said love has to have a source and a purpose. Yeah. I like... Uh-uh, you said you love, see? <laughs> All right, I love... I told you I was the preacher. I love being someone else. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, it makes perfect that, sense. But I mean that in a good way. I like being someone else. I like to show... No, 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 no. Finish that sentence. Because the Holy Spirit is, is, is talking through your heart. You like to be someone else 
temporarily. Yeah. And that's something that God wants to straighten out. You being somebody else temporarily. Because God said to me, who you really are, you haven't even discovered yet because you've been so many different people temporarily. Oh, you thought I was just interviewing you because I didn't know what was going on. No, he wants you to be yourself at all times. I understand acting. In, in high school, I ranked in the state in drama. I had four stars and a bar because you can't do five stars. On, on my, I didn't get a letterman jacket, but if I had one, they had to give me a bar because I did so well. So I definitely understand acting. But God said, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to be yourself. Because God said you get around one group and you're one way, you're another group, you're another way, which is a whole lot of people. But God said you do it well and you do it too well. And he needs you to be yourself. And the reason why he needs you to be yourself is because that's who he's going to bless. He's going to bless who you really, really, really are. Now, this, of course, this isn't to embarrass you, not at all. Please, God, tell me. Because now you're going to, you're going to see your life as God sees your life. Because you still have some questions. You're not sure about your future. And the reason why you're not sure, you, 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 you know what you could do, I could do this, could do that. But God said you're not sure about your future. And God said because you've been so many different ones until you don't know which um, identity is going to go where. But God said when you close in ranks and you focus in on just who he has caused you to be, then you will know where you are going because you'll know you. You'll know you. Because God said, I, I care for you. Uh, oh, foot, it is almost 1.30. Lord Jesus, help us. So now the whole point is, y'all, we do not hold church this long. I'm so sorry. Y'all, please come back. I won't be this long next time. <laughs> I did not realize. Why didn't y'all pull my shirt or something? I didn't know. <laughs> Let the spirit lead. All right, I'll do that. So... What you have to know now in your own life is that God has one straight road for you. Now, I have to tell you, you're going to be an almost instant success, all right? You're not some people have to climb and go through. You're going to be an almost instant, but you, not you, are going to be an almost instant success. But it will be after you successfully complete your education. Are you ready for this? which includes your masters. Okay. <laughs> I know, I knew, I, did, I know, which includes, yes. <laughs> I know, I know, that's why I said like that, because I already know it, because your spirit is talking to me, so I already know how you are, so I already know how you're going to respond to what I'm going to say, that's why I set you up for it. <laughs> so get ready, get ready. Because you're going to have to, you could do it online. It's fine. He just said that. You could do it online. Absolutely cool. But you're going to have to get that to get to where you're going. Because there's a certain level of respect you're going to need. Mm -hmm. Because right, just right out of just the four year, what do you call it? Bachelor's. Bachelor's. That is it's just, you're not going to get the respect. You're just not. I see you teaching also. <clears throat> I see you teaching. So you might as well go ahead and prepare for that as well. All right? Okay. All right. I'm telling you, man. All right. God bless you. Jaquez. 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 All right. God bless you. All right. My brother. God bless you, man. What's your name? David. David. God bless you, man. So how can I help you? Basically, just trying to find my path. That's all. Just trying to find your path. Do you have a job? Yes. Where do you work? Well, we go around working different Walmarts, so I was visiting the area, and the sister invited me to your church. Oh, oh, praise God. What do you do for Walmart? We set up, like, studios in different uh, stores and stuff like that. Oh, like take pictures, yes. studios, and things like that? Yes, 
Okay. Do you like doing that? Where, where do you live? I'm from the Washington, D.C. area. Mm-hmm. Where do you live now? Well, while we're here, it's a temporary thing. So, um, oh, so you live in Washington. Oh, so you at Walmart, and, and Mother Jones saw you, and they invited you to church, and you came. Yes. And you're only in town temporarily, and you're going back to D.C. Yes, sir. Wow. That is awesome. Walterboro. Oh, Walterboro. I had to pay him up from Walterboro. Bring him here. Okay. Oh, so how long will you be in Walterboro? couple more weeks and then you're going back okay now let me tell you how, how often do you travel let me get that you travel a lot lately, how lately, lately how often like every every month every month you're in a different state or city or what different city different state different city and different state every month okay let me tell you what's happening with you now what God is doing is he is allowing you to see people. This is very important for your life because there is a trail that you're leaving behind everywhere you go. People see you and they can't figure you out. They can't. They can't figure you out. And you are one of the simplest people you are not one that's just so difficult and it, you're one of the simplest people. You have one of the kindest hearts, but people just can't figure you out because when they look at you, they don't know how to approach you. And you're not doing anything to cause that. You're just you. And so God said what he's doing is he's leaving a trail and everywhere you've gone, somebody remembers you. Somebody is remembering you. Now, that was that season. In Jesus' name, as the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I cause an end and I close that season. Okay, that season is closed. Now where you're about to go, you're about to affect people in such a way that's going to be a blessing to you. People are going to start just giving you things. Watch what I'm saying. People are just going to start giving you things and opportunities are going to open. But you've been working for people, but I want you to begin preparing for your own business. Amen. Prepare for your own business. Because God said this to me. He said, people want to work for you. He's already set it up. People want to work for you. And these people are going to be driven. When I say driven, they're going to really be driven. People want to work for you. So now you're going to have to change that mentality. You'll still travel, of course, because what you're going to do is, is going to be in different parts of the country, of America, different parts. I see three right now. So you're going to still travel, but you're, you've got to, got to, got to go ahead and get that mentality and just talk to God. To say, Father, what business do you want me to open? It's going to come to you. And so, Father, I thank you and I bless you for David. I thank you for what you've called him to be and what you're going to do. And Father, even as you have blessed me with more than one business of my own, I right now release that entrepreneurial yeah. mentality, wisdom, and understanding to David now yes. in Jesus' name and let him be prosperous yes. and gain wealth mm -mm -mm. even as his soul prospers in you, that he keeps his relationship with you firm and that he talks to you along the way in Jesus' name. Okay, I felt it go in. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah to God. Amen. If, if anybody has to leave, I completely understand the blood of Jesus covers you. Hey, sweetheart. Hi. How you doing? What's your name? Sandra. Sandra. Who invited you here? Barbara. Barbara. Hey, Amen. Sister Barbara. How can I help you? Um, I just want to become closer to the Lord. And, um, well, I was, you know, into the church, but mm -hmm. I'm not into the church like I'm supposed to. Okay. All right. Well, you in you in the church now. 
So just keep on coming. If you want to keep coming here, we'd be glad to have you here. So do you have a job? Yes. Where do you work? Morningside. Oh, you work at Morningside. That is a nice place. <laughs> it is nice. <laughs> now, I want you to know that God has a plan for your life. And his plan for your life is very, very, very specific and is very, very detailed. What you're about to face in your life, and I'm telling you now, you're about to face something in your life, you're going to have to make a decision. But it's not for you to worry or fear because you're going to make the right decision and it's going to lead you to the rest of your life. Wow. And God just said, to the best of your life. It's going to be better than anything you've ever experienced before. Watch what God will do for you. I just saw a crown come on your head. Just saw a crown come on your head. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right. God said, from now on, no more worrying. No more worrying about anything, about stuff. Because sometimes the very first thing that comes causes the worry. God said he wants you to talk to him more. Just talk to him wherever you are. Just talk to him. Talk right then and there. Immediate. As soon as it comes, immediately just start talking to him. And God's going to bless your life with abundance. God said with abundance. According to what you can handle. Because now God is saying he wants you to look at your budget and he wants you to streamline your budget. Stop overspending. Is your daddy talking to you right now? What? Yes, he is. Yes, yes. He wants you to stop. You do spend a lot. Mm hmm. Well, he knows. Things so, that I don't really need, I just buy, I just buy, just be. <laughs> yep, that's, that was over. <laughs> ah. Hey, I, I can say I ain't number the telephone. So, what God is doing now is he's causing wealth, but. It's what you can handle. And handle means save. Save. That savings account needs to have savings in it. Save. 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 You don't need stuff. I can tell you like dressing. You look great. You got enough. Thank you. you don't have to get any more. You got enough that can last you this whole year. Wow. <laughs> I know you do. Too much. Yeah, exactly. Still got tags on it and stuff. Wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, God shows you, shows you, shows me your closet. Still got tags. Don't, no more. No more. She said, my Lord, no more. All right. All right. Bless you. Thank you. Amen. Oh, excuse me, son. Now, this is my goddaughter. This is Gabrielle. She goes to Chief Apostle to Priest Church here visiting for the weekend. Oh, we done talk so much. I don't even know. I already know. You know, but I, I will say this, that the Lord is elevating you. And in this elevation, God is sanctifying you for his purpose. And because he's sanctifying you, he's setting you apart, he's keeping you apart, and he's going to keep you apart. This is the time now for you to say, okay, Father, I'm ready to work for you. Tell me specifically what you want me to do. Because God is ready to have conversations with you. He's ready for the conversations back and forth. Back and forth, he's ready. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. She's a senior in high school and she's thinking about clapping, waiting to see what, what they, she's already been accepted, but she wants the full scholarship thing. And her ACT and ACT is already there for her to be a presidential scholar. Yes, yeah, she's a brain. So, but I'm going to tell you this, what God is doing in your life, all of that has already been taken care of. He's already taken care of that, but it's a spiritual part that he's working on right now. Lift your hands, close your eyes. Now, Father, I thank you so much for my daughter. I bless you, Father, for what you've spoken and for what, ooh, and for what you're going to continue to do in and through her life. And Lord, impart 
what she will need to know, to know right now in Jesus' name and that there will be no question about it, but that it will flow for your glory's sake in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. And we bless you for the fire ah! that will not cease from burning yeah, yeah. in and through her life. Fire of God on her life and remain in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless God. Amen.